What's good, people? Sam O'Reilly with a Fight Talk podcast in association with Round Date. Myself and James today delighted to be joined by Dirty Derry Matthews. How's things, mate? All good. Everything's good, thanks. Feeling good. Enjoying my time and life. <laughs> Alright, Derek. So, um, not everyone, we do start at the beginning. Um, so, go back. When you first walked into a gym, uh, what made you walk into that boxing gym and what made you stick at it? I just. I didn't know if I was just walking into the boxing gym. I just. Uh, I was a uh, more successful boxing club in Britain. Uh, I'd say that was my webinar. And that basically, that was my youth club. And I walked in at the age of 18. I never looked back. Yeah, obviously you had, a, you had a long and a very good amateur career. Um, what would you say was the highlight of the amateurs for you? I'd say we won the senior NBA title. Um, everyone told me when I went in this competition. Um, I was 18 years of age, being one of the youngest ever NBA champions. And those who doubt me, they were laughing at me, saying, you know, the kids want to get hurt. And I went out there and stopped every opponent apart from the final. Um, so... I've done that, I've beat everyone but what was basically put in front of me and, you know, that, that was one of my highlights and also winning a Junior Olympic gold medal out in America. I beat a you very know, top American kid, I beat a Mongolian kid and a German kid, so, you know, I, I've been in there with the best and, and it's, been, it's been an enjoyable career. When you, when you walked into the gym, when you started at a young age, did you have any boxing heroes or idols when you was growing up? No, I just, no, because I was a young age and in the area where I'm, where I'm from, it was just, it was, a, it was an area where, it was a rough area, but it was an area where, you know, people respected each other and, and that stuff like that, but then when I did get into boxing, um, I, I think it was a few months in that I, I come to the table back in the gym training, and then I went on to, to, to try and, try and be another David Burke for the club and, you know, he was he was my idol growing up as a fighter. People asked guys and Tyson and people like that. But I had David Burke. I always wanted to be be the next David Burke, and I was lucky enough to win the same titles. I was lucky enough. To, I never went to see the Olympics, and um, David did. He went to the Atlanta Olympics, but I was lucky, you know, to share the ring with him and spar and growing up and, and training alongside aside him as a professional. So no, I, I thought I'd done, I never done too bad. Yeah, definitely. When you when you turned over, what was the um what was the thinking? Had you achieved everything you you wanted to as an amateur? No, well, I, I always remember I never got picked for the Commonwealth Games. Uh, every ABA champion that year got nominated and got picked for the ABAs, and I never, um, um, which was very frustrating. After after winning the senior ABA title, you know the games didn't matter. Then I thought I'd probably be favoured all the games, yeah. and I never. Uh, they picked Mark Moran and then Stephen Vaughan and Gary Metcalf who he was still in touch with to this day they approached me to turn to the festival got me a deal with Frank Warren and, and we went from there and I, I think my me, me first year as a pro I had seven fights I think I stopped six of them so you know I, I, I never done too bad and back day back then in them days believe me the journeyman in them days the proper journeyman they come to win and you know so I've I, I, I've done it the other way and I've learned a lot. You mentioned that you signed with uh, Frank Warren. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you, a lot of people uh, in the boxing world fan was uh, under the impression that Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn won't work together. Um, but yourself, I'll say, Frank, by Frank Warren, your last two fights were on Eddie's shows. Um, yeah. Know, did you have much of a part in the negotiations? Did you have a oh, any friction between the two I, guys? I, I think that's down to having a good management team in MTK. Um, my, my, my MTK, you know, they've always looked after me the best they could since the teams over them and they got me to fight on Eddie's bills and, you know, I'm one of them, I, I, I can fight on anyone's bills because I sell a lot of tickets, I'm an entertaining fighter um, and, you know, Frank's, I've got an unbelievable relationship with Frank, he's, he's, you know, he's looked after my career tremendously and, and again with Eddie, Eddie's looked after Eddie when I've been on his show, he's always looked after me the best of everything and even, even the small small show promoters I've, I've always had a good relationship with them 
is it Dave Caldwell and um, Frank Maloney. Adapted to when Frank Maloney was going at the time, and you know I've always I've always had a good relationship. I've always been been entertained to fight. So you know, I'm what you call a promoter's dream. <laughs> yeah, you, you're certainly one of the few guys that you could basically turn up on most shows because, like you say, your relationships are good. You never burnt bridges, and you're just willing, Dan, and willing to fight anyone, weren't you? So, I think that's what people like enjoy working with someone like yourself. Yeah, that's it. I just got turned up. I know. Listen, I could be most probably being everyone from Matthew's office now. I've been people in Frank's office now, and, and I'm speaking to them directly, and that, that's a, that, that's a good relationship to have into the next career and one round which has been coaching so you know, I've, I've been in the game a long time been a professional for 15 years and it's I don't know anything else apart from boxing so you never know there could be a return on it there could be a comeback on the card <laughs> <laughs> was it been six weeks seven weeks <laughs> six seven weeks but listen I've, I've seen over the last couple of weeks I've seen some of the lightweights win British Commonwealth titles and you never know, the phone rings, um, I'd die for the opportunity. She's still open to offers now, are you? <laughs> yeah, well, I, when I say I've retired, I mean, I've retired because my training and, and my management team wants me, but, wanted me to, but I mean, if something was offered, something big was offered, maybe the call of a call, call return fight, cause that's always going to be there, because obviously I've beaten them with draws, so... And I don't know where that needs going to go, what avenue he's going to go down. So there's a fight, a potential fight. And, you know, to Sean Dodd, I love, I love Masha. Masha is a great kid. And, and, and he's a friend as well, but he's from, he's from Birkenhead and I'm from Liverpool. So for the Commonwealth title, it makes sense to do that in Liverpool if, if you know, if Eddie wanted to put it on. Yeah, you was in there with so many names throughout your career, as we, you know, touched on there, Crawler and there's so many guys if we if we think back through your opponents who would you say was the standout when you were in there with him you thought he's probably one of the best I've been in here with I'd say Luke Campbell um, just his time and his his accuracy and, and then and then you can say Terry it's one end where I've been in with them all so yeah exactly it's hard to pick and you've got Terry Fanning you know, I, I, I think he's you know, he's brilliant and he deserves he deserves a massive, massive fight. Terry does. Um I'd say him, Luke. Um I don't know how good a one thing he is because the fight didn't last that long, but um and then you've got even Tommy Cole. Tommy Cole was beating me up for ten rounds before the changed him. Mm-hmm. So you know Tom Tommy's a good fighter. And Collar, who you know, everyone knows after that fight what he went on to what he went on to do so Oh, he deserves a lot of credit himself. Yeah, Crawler, Crawler's he, he's always been a great fighter for me. He's always stood out. Just his heart and determination. He just he's a guy that I I like a lot. I mean, would obviously you don't want to tell a man what route to take, but what do you do next if you're Crawler? That's the only f- question for me. Do you know what I mean? He's he lost his title. I don't know. Well, he's been in he's been in big fights. He's been in big nights, and and he's shown and he's a ticket and me, I'm me. And I'd be out of ticket so, so it's just one of them fights where there, there could be no belt for no one. But I guarantee that me and Andy Collar boxed at the Echo or the Emmy Arena would sell it out because we're both fighters. We both, you know, we've got a great fan base. I've got a good fan base. You've got a good fan base. And another crowd would love it. You mentioned, I said, you and also mentioned Terry Flanagan. Uh, a lot of people have been saying that for a long time. I'd love to see that back in Manchester. You know, United City rivalry, both fans of each team. Now, a lot of people are under the impression now see Crawler losing his title, that Crawler now needs Flanagan. Just how good a fight is that if they were to meet? Yeah, I, I, listen, it's a great fight. It's a great fight for Manchester. But I agree with the fans as well. Why does Flanagan need Crawler? He doesn't. Flanagan can do what he wants. He's the world champion. He doesn't need Crawler. Crawler needs to come back and to win a fight before he fights him but if it doesn't happen and then do do fights I'd like to be front row for it because I think it'd be a great fight Do you think Flanagan suffers by not being someone who's you know quite outspoken we we touched on O'Hara Davis um, and you know he's quite quite vocal on Twitter and he sort of calls people out and stuff and he seems quite respectful after the fight I mean obviously we don't know the ins and outs of what goes on with yourself and that but 
Flanagan, do you think if he was a little bit more outspoken, he may be getting the bigger no, fights? I, I, I just think with Terry, he just lets his boxers do the talking. Um, and I, I think that might be down to his coach, Steve, as well as his management team. But yes, he's, he's a good lad, Terry. I spoke to him numerous times at shows and all that. And, and he, he is he is a genuine, genuine good good fighter. And he's, a, he's a gent as well. So, you know, you don't have to always trash talk to get, to get the big fights. You can get boxing and get the big fights. And, you know, I'm the same. I don't trash talk people, but I get big fights because I'm a good fighter and I, and I, I want to fight the best. And I think Flan is going to get that this year. I think he will, you know, he'll get the, the big opportunities. And I think Frank with BT Sports will, will be pushing him in the right direction. Yeah, he's, he's definitely due a big fight. He really is. What, what, what's your thoughts on O'Hara now? Obviously, you shared the ring with him. There was some, some shit said in the build-up, but he's been, as far as I'm aware, very respectful in the aftermath of the fight. What's your what's your thoughts on yeah. him? Well, after the fight, I, as I do to every opponent, I always go in the changing rooms and make sure they're okay, make sure they're safe, make sure they get home safe, whether they've won or lost. It's, it's a thing I've done right from the start, make sure they're okay. I went in and I just spoke to him and said, let your boxing do your talking, and if, you know you can get to the top. You've got a great team behind him. He's got Eddie. He's got Tony Sims. You know he's got a good PR company behind him as well. And he, the kid can be good. And he's very. Let me tell you now, he is very, very powerful. Um, but let's see him in another, another fight. Did he get me at the right time? I'd say he did. Did he get me at, at ten stone where I've never boxed before? Yeah. So I know I'm a lightweight. I'm a lightweight where I can. I'm lighter now than. I don't even think. Well, I'm not ten stone five now at the moment, so I know I can make a lightweight any day of the week. So, so we've got me at the right time. We got a big name on this card, and a fair play to him. As an opponent, uh, with like you know, again, the Howard Davis is on the subject. With him, he was, as you say, trash talking in the build up. Do you, or does any fight ever get sort of take it on a personal level? Or do you know, you know, just trash talk? He's trying to sell his tickets. No, to be honest, that did that did get on a personal. That did get a bit personal because we didn't have to sell tickets. It was already a sellout show. None of us had tickets to sell. It was pay per view. We weren't getting a cut of the pay per view, so he he only had to be quiet. He could have just been quiet and just let his boxing do the talking. But he was just he come to Liverpool and he was shouting abuse at the way in and, and at the press conference. Sorry, he was shouting all stuff like you know you're paying my wages and all that. And, the boxing fans do pay the wages, so we should be applauding them instead of slating them, if you know what I mean. He should be like, wow, thanks for coming. Great turnout, thanks very much. Yeah. Instead, he was just going on and on and on, on, abusing them. And I was like, this fella's a clown. He doesn't realise. But I don't know whether there's a little bit of a screw missing in there or someone's telling him to do it. I just don't know what, I just don't know what avenue he's going down. Yeah. Well, time will tell if he. I mean, like you say, you've you've shared the ring with him, and he seems very powerful. I think he's a very good fighter, and you never know. He might he might tone it down a little as he gets a little bit more up the ladder. Maybe once his name's spoken about on his way up. Um, but he's definitely a very good prospect in the division, isn't he? Oh, he's he's a, he's a tremendous prospect, um, and I, and I do think he will go far. He's got a good team, got a good trainer, Tom Sims, and I think I think he he is he is you know destined to go to the top. He's got everything in place. It's just about himself doing it now. Obviously, the horror is your last fight. Now, is it, throughout your career, is there anyone you got in the ring with who, after the fight, you was a bit shocked at how well they were? Did you ever not underestimate someone, but did you think someone wasn't as good as when they turned up on the day with yourself? Say that again, sorry. Was, was there anyone you got in the ring with that you um, felt performed out of their skin and surprised you a little bit when you got in the ring? Um. Not really. Uh, Tony Luis. I was in a box with Tony Luis for the WBA incident. He stepped in the day and he was going to get into a fight in Canada to say no, we boxed. Him and he flew in the river. Um, and I boxed him and I thought, you know what, I'll get him out of here after five or six rounds. He's just had a long flight or whatever. I'm bloody hell, could he fight? He wasn't stop coming forward. <laughs> I could have had a bat in the hand and I don't think I would have punched him. <laughs> um, but again, it's uh, there's another one. No one's since the box Tony Luis. You don't see any other big fighting him. Yeah. 
if, if you look around, if you look around the prospects, the O'Hara Davis, the Josh Taylors, are there any that stand out for you as you think could be the future of the division in this country? Uh, I think Robert Davis Jr. Um, I think I think he can be very very good. And um, it's just got to be you know, got to be given the opportunity to get fights. If you know what I mean. If he gets if he gets the right fights, Robert Davis Jr. I think he can. I think he can do it. Um, and again, Owen Davies very good as well. Um, travel. He's already established more or less. Um, you know, so I can't think of ten stone. Josh Taylor again as an unskilled fighter, so you know the, the lightweight and the ten stone division. I'd say in Britain at the moment is is, is the best. It's Where a, a, a bit booming a couple of years ago, it was the super middleweight, and now I think the super middleweight the the worst division to be in now. It, well, not the worst division, but you know the, there's not many battles there to win a British title. There's not big hard fights there, so you know the lightweight and the, and the ten stone division is. It's the way where all the main fights are. Yeah, I, I've, I want to see Robbie Davis against O'Hara. That's for me. I mean, me, me and James have got a bet. I think the fight happens this year. I think it happens in the summer. James ain't too convinced, but I think that fight is a really good fight, and it will show yeah, just. How I don't good... think it'll happen. Nah, the promotional nah, issues, do you reckon? Yeah, I don't think it'll happen. Uh, I just don't. I just can't see. I think Robbie's got a bit of a deal with ITV. Yeah, and he's going to be on. He's going to be on Sky, so you know, unless they can emerge together, and you never know, you can put a, a double show on, a show on ITV for one, and maybe one on Sky, which for the boxing fan, it'd be brilliant. But this is this is my hope with all the big platforms now involved, you know, BT and ITV. I just hope that the the fights can actually fucking get made that we want to see, and stop all the you know the the politics and just get the good fights on and forget about who's doing okay. what. What, what else? I'd like to see. I'd like to see it gloves it off with all the promoters yes. around the table. But I wouldn't like to see it on Sky or. But I'd like to see it on IFL where no one's got to broadcast. Yeah. If you know what I mean? No, no one's got to see. It. I'd like Frank, Eddie, and um, Richard Poxon, for instance, Hennessy, Good or, um, the Salem brothers, yeah. all to sit around the table and just say, you know what? Let's make the fight. Let's make these fights happen. For the fans, the fans are the ones who pay the tickets, uh, pay the wages. For the fans, that that's because all the promoters now and all right. There, there's a list of my twenty fighters. There's your twenty fighters. Let's make these matches. Can you imagine? And I think it, I think that'd be brilliant. Yeah. You could have like so. For instance, Frank one will go right. I'll have five on my fight show. Eddie has five on his. Hennessy has five on his. Cox has five on his. Conwell has five on his, or whatever. Whatever other TVs are getting involved. Yeah. That'd be mate. That'd be amazing. I mean, that's 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 my big hope. When since this BT Sport Box Nation deal came up, my big hope was that they can forget all the the rubbish and just get get the big fights made. That's the hope. That's it. Because as well as being a boxer, I, I'm a boxing fan and I love watching fights and yeah. I go every show that I can not possible. So, you, know, you want to be, you want to see the best fights. You want to see, you want to see, you know, like, and the fans. You want the British boxers. You want to be talked about like in America. No, I think at the moment we're the hotbed. Britain is the hotbed for, for world champions and for, for the best fighters. But let's get, you know, let's keep it that way. Let's get, let's make these local fights you know, happen again. That's Billy Joe Saunders against Golovkin, Billy Joe Saunders against Eubank again. Fights like that where the crowds want to turn up in, in, in the thousands to watch. Fury against Joshua is another massive fight. Stuff like that. And then you've got Bellew. Then you can fight Kiwi Fiori. There's, there's, there's so much out there, so many good fights out there. Definitely. I mean, me and Sam actually talking before we rung you up, and it's a case of last night, you had one show on Sky, one show on BT at the same time. Yeah. Now, why can't, Sam said, why can't Sky turn around and have a Friday fight night? Put yeah. their show on a Friday, BT on a Saturday, win win for all the fans. But it seems to be they're competing against each other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it'd be, it'd be good if, for instance, the show on a Friday on Sky, maybe three of the fights against Sky fighters are fighting Box Nation fighters or BT fighters, and then, and then the following day, three against three, again, or four, or whatever. So, it's just, 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 it's just,
it doesn't always have to be a pissing contest, does it? Hope. No, because yeah, come on, 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 on half of Sunday's show, he's rolling, you know, on the side of the car, he's going to win. Yeah. Yeah, you know what side of the car is going to win. On, on 80% of the shows. Definitely. Now, Derek, I had a question sent in on Twitter um, from yeah. Dan Frost. Um, he asked, um, you've had a long and decorated career, but what will go down as your sweetest win looking back? Um, I'd say the crawling in Manchester when everyone's out to me. Um, I only got five returns just when we're really out and calling me up. I just wanted to take the fight and I'm just that is five weeks no just I've just been beaten my silly for the IBO world title. And I just I had the opportunity and I went to Manchester and stopped in his own backyard. When he was just Manchester was old where he's from, so that was one of one of the proudest moments. And then uh, just finally for me, Derry, I just want to mention obviously what you're sort of active in at the moment, your uh, your boxing classes for disability. Uh, yeah. tell me what you do in regards to that and how did you get into it? Quite a bit, um, I'm just having a Twitter bank down there one day, you know, I said, I, I, I seen that the way, and uh, I had a bit of banter with that, and then went to, invited down to the gym to Liverpool, took it on the pads, and then I decided that, you know, I'd, I'd like to coach disability boxing, and there was an avenue for it, there was a, there was a window for it, and then, I teamed up with Mark Hall, who runs a football, disability football team, and it went from there. And then now we started with four, and now we've got 40. We've got 40 you know, disability fighters coming in the gym, training hard, working hard, and, and, and to be honest, they're loving it. They're, and they're, it's an honour to coach them. You know, you'd ask them to be in at 2 o'clock, they're there at 1 o'clock, and, you know, and, and I'm very proud of them. Yeah, superb. Do, yes. you, do you see this long term, Derry? I mean, yeah, hundred percent. Um Eddie Ernst just backed us as well. He's just give us five thousand pounds. So I'm I'm over the moon with that. Um Eddie's just give us five grand. We've, we've done a few more fundraisers. We've been out to the coaching the weekend. Been to um, down to Wolverhampton. Um, see it, when I say it, it, it it's mine as well as Mark Hollis, but we're getting worse, but we're sending our students to work as well so we're going to have a job that, that's what that's what I want I want a full time centre where I've got an empty building I want an empty building off the Liverpool City Council I want to be able to go in put a ring in there 10 bags and the students who I've trained from day one I want them to I want that to be their workplace I want them to be on a on a salary I want them to run it and be a community centre where they can come in with the bags like the aggression out and, and come and have a chit chat Maybe play on the Xbox or whatever, and go on the in on the gym, and, and you know, and be part of a family where you know these kids have never been given the opportunity. Some of them have never been on a bus before. Now they're getting the bus to the gym. They're getting there next bit early. They've you know they've never been a boxing show before. Last night, thirty, they were at the Echo Arena, you know, watching a boxing. So it was great for them. I was going to mention that actually, you know, it's fantastic. Also, I see on Twitter they all got in the ring with yourself and have a prize and. You know, you could tell I loved it. I've seen one picture, um, one of the lads down in class, he picked up his kit from Susie Wong and he's, he's just buzzing about the kit. It's just, it's fantastic for me, what you're doing for them. Yeah, we've, we've got them all. Listen, listen um, and there's no special treatment. They're all the same. Um, if, one, if one fighter hasn't got a pair of boxing boots, well, I'll make sure that the week later he's got a pair of boxing boots with that and with a family. And I just don't want to just do it in boxing. But we're like next next month we're going to go walk a mountain up more of and we've got two guys in a wheelchair and we're going to walk them out and we'll, as a team we're going to push them up the mountain in the wheelchair um, and, and do things what they could never do um, and that, that's, that's, all, that's the main aim and then you know hopefully it runs full time and, and we get a lot of backing off the Liverpool City Council and other, other funders or funders and you know, it's going to be a full time be a full time job for myself and Mark Hall yeah, super. It's excellent what you're doing, and I know it's something very close to James. He's uh, he obviously auctioned off one of his gloves. Is uh, I think was it was it Nigel Ben glove you auctioned off James for the for the yeah, 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 Nigel yeah. Ben glove. Yeah, it was Nigel. And thanks very much, that James. I really, really appreciate it. I mean, you know, means a lot. I mean, that that farm goes a long, long way. 
Um, and I can buy one twenty pair of boxing boots for the kids. You know? So, you know, we're, I'm delighted with that, and you know, hopefully it can continue and we can keep growing and growing. Definitely, and we'll, we'll um, if you know, when when we can, we'll try and put as much um, put of attention on it and try and get involved in the fundraisers when we can, mate. But just for me, you know, it's a, it's an excellent thing you're doing there, mate. So, listen, keep it up, and we appreciate your time. Thank you very much for coming on to the podcast. Thanks very much. You're welcome anytime. Even when you're in, if you're ever in Liverpool anytime, I'm just, you're welcome to call in the gym and you can see the lads and even the pros. We've got in the gym. We've got five five pros in there as well. So. They'll always be good for the chat for you. Beautiful. Excellent. Well, listen, again, thanks for your time, mate. We appreciate it. Um, thanks, James. Thanks, James. Cheers, Derry. Bye-bye. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. A couple of substitutions. Dirty Derry Matthews and James Lupton out. Craig Scott, the, the world's greatest Scotsman, in. And um, Dave Allen couldn't make it, so I've replaced him with another heavyweight. Um, maybe not as in as much shape but he's making his debut on the Fight Talk podcast my brother-in-law he's an old man he's got no social media but he does like his boxing Kev what's happening yeah I'm good mate I'm good thank you very much how did you feel getting thank the call up me on. yeah how did you yeah. like getting the call up mate do you feel like you've, you know, you've been picked at school or something yeah, it's, uh, yeah it was unusual literally you gave me about 15 minutes so I'm really grateful for that <laughs> so I don't know how much I'm going to put in but I'll try and put in as much as possible mate Oh, I, I, I have very much a, a lot of trust in you, Kev. Um, so, cool. yeah, I ain't expecting great things, but you know. I don't trust him. He sounds fucking. He sounds a bit sneaky. I don't know if I trust him, but fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you're Scottish. Leave it. Alone. <laughs> this is their first meeting, and we're hoping for great things on this podcast. <laughs> What's happening, boys? Oh, we've got um, we've got a lot to go over. Let's start with. The boxing that I didn't watch any of because I was at a Steve Goodwin show. Um, but we'll start in Leicester. Has everybody watched this card? Yeah, I watched yeah. it. Yeah. Craig, you start us off. Talk us through it. But it's funny actually because I'm currently drinking a, an Estrella because I'm a massive fan of Spain and Kiko Martinez. So it's funny you should start talking about a BT Sports Box Nation card. Um, yeah, the card was all right. The, the first fight on the, the televised card was Daryl Williams um, against Jermaine Smile for the English super middleweight title. Um, great fight. Really, really good fight. Back and forward the whole time. We've obviously bumped into Daryl Williams a few times and he's, uh, he's a nice geezer and, and he won. Obviously, so he won by split decision. Really, really good fight. And uh, that was a good way to kick it off. Did you score it? Did you score it the way they scored it, or what was? How did you score it? Yeah, yeah. I had I had Williams. I didn't have it. It was weird because the, the cards that were for Williams it was two for Williams, and they were quite wide by like five rounds. And then the other card for Smile was was a bit tighter. I guess there could be an argument that Smile maybe nicked it, but for me, Williams Williams is really really good at planting his feet. They mentioned um they mentioned in the commentary, which was very fair. Can I, just, can I just say that? First of all, the commentary, I'm, I don't know if they've been watching social media and seeing what people have been saying about commentary being biased. The commentary last night on BT Sports was very, very fair because Williams wasn't the home fighter. They were giving him a lot of props. Um, he plants his feet really well, throws nice big wing and shots, but um, he gets caught a lot. You know, he's, he's not got the greatest, the greatest defence, so it makes for an exciting fight. But I had him winning the fight, yeah. Okay, how did you score it? Yeah, I had it the other way, if I'm honest. I smile winning only by one. Um, but yeah, no, I agree, I agree. He was coming forward, he was he was landing good shots, but he took so much and what I thought about it was the amount of headbutts and cuts there was. It was uh, yeah. it was pretty dirty, wasn't it? That was what yeah. I found from it. But um no, great fight to be honest. It's a really good fight. I watched a couple no, of rounds when I got back from the Goodwin show. Um obviously I was behind as so I was trying to catch up with everything. And the fucking problem having one on BT Sport and one on the Sky at the exact same time is you ain't going to get to see everything of what you want. And yeah. It really pisses me off why they're competing. Like I don't get it. If I was BT Sport, they, they're they trying to break Sky's monopoly of it, yeah? So why not do a Friday fight night? Why not keep I agree. all boxing fans happy? I don't want to be competing and flicking between and then it just it pisses me off. I don't know why they do that. Why it, it would have been smarter to do a Friday, I think. Um, could it have worked, though? Um, I think what what you do if if you do it that way, 
you're asking people to keep the whole weekend free to watch boxing. If, if people are real boxing fans, you're asking them to watch on a Friday night, a Saturday night. And some people some people just don't have that time. So you, then again, if you put a Friday fight night on, you're going to risk people maybe being out on the Friday and they're going to watch the boxing on the Saturday. You, you risk kind of splitting your viewership a little bit. But I know what you're saying. It's, it seems like they, they kind of dilute the product because they put it on the one night. But for me, the, the BT card last night was better than the matching card, the, the Sky card. I don't know if Kev agrees. Yeah, no, I agree. The card was better. Just the hosting's awful, isn't it? It's oh, it's, yeah, yeah. It's shocking. It really is. Um, yeah, no, the card was better. I agree 100%. I was watching more of that than I was uh, on the Sky card, definitely. What was it? Yeah. Was it that the, it would just have more competitive fights? Or what made it better for I you? Think was, I think it was a lot of 50-50. I think the... Um, Moving on the Anthony Yard fight was was great as well. Um, you know, I think they just had better you know better people on it that you wanted to watch. I think so. Yeah, I think the the fights when, when you looked at the fights they were exciting and you kind of uh, I I kind of hear what Kev's saying about being fifty fifty. I don't think I mean the, the Williams fight was fifty fifty. I guess the Langford fight was was billed as being fifty fifty. But for me, even your guys like Anthony Yard and for me Daniel Dubois. He was up against a decent caliber opposition, which which was nice to see because we know um, he fought Butterbean in his debut, which was a tough, which was a fucking tough fight. Um, who actually, I don't even think he hit my left hook. I think he slipped on some grease that was in the bottom of his shoe uh, for the chip shop. So he had a good fight last night against a Cameroonian who won a Commonwealth bronze medal, and he was three and one. His record was three and one as a pro. So they were just they were just better caliber. I don't know, it, it was it was better to watch than, than the, the Sky Face. Sky Face kind of dragged on for me a little bit last night. Absolutely. Well, Masha, didn't um, Sean Dodd and Appleyard went 12? Yeah. Then Ryder Fielding went 12? Yeah. What else was on that card? Rosado Murray went 12. Went 12. Um, yeah, you, had that fa- you had that Farrell versus Carriers as well that went 12, didn't you? I, yeah, did, I didn't yeah. see that. That's, that, that was what I mean. Yeah, I got... Uh, pretty awful I got, didn't miss anything mate nah I got back from Goodwin about 10 o'clock and I tried to flip between the two the two the, there was two ones that I wanted to see Anthony Yard um, who I know really well and Daryl Williams who's always been he's given his time up for me a lot um, but the Williams one I mean do you know Jermaine Smiles last fight was on a Goodwin show against Leon McKenzie um, yeah so I don't know who was actually promoting I know you're saying about it being fair and stuff obviously I can't judge because I haven't watched the whole card but none of those, as far as I'm aware, are Frank Warren fighters. Apart from Mickey Elliott saying that um, he, Frank Warren had promised to give Daryl Williams some more airtime and stuff, but I don't think... Even the... Even, sorry to interrupt, man, but even, even the Dubois fight, they were, they, they were obviously complimenting Dubois, but they were giving props to the other boys as well. You know, they were... They were oh, yeah. You know, Dubois with a big right hand. You know, they were, it, wasn't, it wasn't just a... It wasn't a lineup of everybody giving Daniel Dubois hand jobs. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, he, he was quite he was quite tricky though, wasn't he? The geezer who's fighting Mandela. He was um, quite good. Yeah, yeah he was, quite he was good. decent. He landed a few decent shots on Dubois as well. I thought. Yeah. So, but yeah, he was Dubois was a class above him definitely. But he, he was alright. He was a decent fight. He is a fucking terrifying specimen. I mean, a nineteen year old boy who's built like that is has been bred in a test tube or something, I don't know what's going on, but he is a monster. He's a beast, he certainly is. I watched that fight, that's when I expected it to end early and it ended in the second, I think, but he definitely, saw him sort of, I don't know if he got caught, but he stumbled forward, he didn't, he looked a bit wild and a bit reckless at times, which I guess you'd expect from a 19 year old in his, only his second pro, his second pro fight. Yeah, I think he's too hard, isn't he? I think that's what it is. I he's, think he's trying to um, he's trying to impress too hard, isn't he? I think or too quickly. Maybe it yeah, will come. Yeah. What, what about Anthony Yard then? Let's talk about Yard. Um, I mean, he he hits so heavy in both hands, and it's the speed, isn't it, Kev? What what's, what's, what do you think about Anthony Yard? Listen, I, I that's the first time I've seen him. I'm not even gonna lie, and I was amazed. You know, if, to, to knock the guy out, I counted it for a ten punch combo, and. I didn't even see half of them. That's how quick they were, and it was just—it was just, yeah, it was—it was stunning. Uh, they called him the new Nigel Ben. Well, Jesus, that he, he's there or thereabouts. He's, he looks amazing. He really does. He can bang, and he's 
He also likes to wear a fur a fur jacket, and I think he pulls it off. You know, he's one of them stylish motherfuckers like Ted Bammy. Yeah, just... he does. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he's at Ted Bammy's level yet, but um, yeah. Last night for me, I've obviously seen you a couple of times, and. And what Kev's saying about that that final flurry where he finished the guy, you're looking at him and you're thinking, how is this guy a muscle bound light heavyweight? Do you know what I mean? How, how he looks like he looks like a welterweight throwing those shots together is so quick, so strong, and and the variation of shots is just really really nice to watch. I thought it was yeah. very impressive. I think the opposition was limited last night. Darren Snow, who had maybe the worst tattoo I've ever seen in my fucking life. He, he had so the the three lines badge on his back. Sam, did you see it? No, I didn't see it. Oh, my it's God. It's terrible. It's nearly as bad as yours, Sam, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> what a prick. Um, I don't know. For, yeah, he, what about last week's Robbie Barrow had, um, was it Pacquiao and Marquez and his nipples are where their cocks should be? Oh, and really? The new British champ, mate, Robbie Barrett. Yeah. Have a Google of that guy's tattoo. It's amazing. It's a chest piece, and it's Pacquiao and someone else. I think it's Marquez. And yeah, for some reason, the nipples right in the middle of the shorts area. It's amazing. <laughs> you got to have a look. Um, Anthony Yard, right? He's fighting May twentieth on the Javante Davis card, um, and he's fighting my mate Chris Hobbs for the Southern Area yeah. title. I say my mate. Yeah. I, I, I sat with his missus during his fight when he won the Southern Area title. Nice geezer, you know. He, Adam, he went around Adam's house, who obviously does the website with us. Just yeah. lovely interview, top man. Lovely. I think he's got four kids. That just don't bring him to the fight, Chris, because Anthony Yard is gonna, you know, he doesn't turn up to make friends. Listen, I think, I think obviously we, obviously you expect Anthony Yard's gonna give him a, a really, really torrid time, but. When you look at, it's like I spoke about before, and like, like I put in that article that I've done about padded records, but I'm not saying he's got a padded record, but what I'm saying is, everybody gets to a certain stage, around 10 fights, or around 8 or 9 fights, or whatever he's at just now, where they have to take a, a step up, and, and Chris Hobbs, is, it sounds like a fucking really nice geezer, and he's been really nice to the site, and he's shared a lot of their stuff, and, and I've got a lot of time for him, but he's, he's a step up from that guy last night, he's, he's a different level from that guy last night, so Definitely. it'll be interesting to see interesting to see how they face off. I think Yard's obviously a massive favourite, um, and you'd probably think Yard would do the job, but it'd be interesting to see if Hobbs takes him out of deep water. Yeah. yeah. Listen, he ain't been there, has he? So, that's, that's the truth. If he can get through the first few rounds, I just can't see it. I just can't see it. He, he looks too powerful. He looks too quick. I think he's going to take um, he's going to take one hell, of a, one hell of a challenge with the beat him, I think. Yeah, if you look through his division, right? You've got obviously British champ is Bullioni, but then you go underneath there. I don't know who really I would fancy against him. I'd fancy him to beat Jose Burton. Um, pfft, is there anyone else that really realistically puts up a great fight? Listen, let's see what happened to the Chris Hobbs fight, who's Southern Area champion. But what's his, what's his um, from what you've seen so far, Sam? Because we, I mean, obviously, me and Kev watched the fight last night. We didn't really see much. We seen him just obliterate um, Darren Snow. But what's his boxing knowledge like? Because we talk about some guy like Jose Button who doesn't look like he can fight. Really, he looks like a lamppost. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, <laughs> but he's got a solid boxing brain. I, mean, I, I thought Big Leone was going to blow him away, um, and I thought Jose Button boxed a very, very smart fight. What's Yard's boxing knowledge like? Because he's a massive guy. I know he was an athlete in various forms before he took up boxing it's, it's kind of for me it's, it's similar to a Joshua type scenario mm-hmm. do we really know how good a boxer he is or does he just look like an athlete throw really really heavy heavy shots I, I don't know man it'll be interesting to see does he fucking need to be a great boxer when he hits yeah, as, sometimes you do, mate. When he no, hits as hard as that I don't know mate listen who is who's really who's Joshua ever had a boxing match with He's gonna have one. He's, he's having one. one on, he's having one on Saturday, which we'll finish up on. But he's got to eighteen and zero and world champion without boxing anyone. He just blows him the fuck away. Now, Anthony Yard is part of a camp. You know, he's down at the Peacock. He's got Tundi with him that is, has extensive boxing knowledge. Um, but he's just doing his job, like you said. He ran a hundred meters in eleven or ten point something seconds. He was at Arsenal. He could have played for Arsenal. He's just an athlete, and he's a man fucking mountain that hits like an elephant. Uh, so you can only beat what's put in front of you, can't you? 
Do you know what I mean? So when he steps up, we'll see how good he is. I think, but um, from what I've seen, he looks he looks the part definitely. Yeah, it makes the sense. one thing that really the one thing that really really annoys me about him is the fact that on Twitter his second name has not got a capital Y; it's got a small case Y. It really irritates me. Well, if that's if that's oh. the biggest thing he's doing wrong, I think he's doing all right. Who else was on the? Um, what would this tour? The main, the main fight on BT was Langford and the mini Mike Tyson, five foot four middleweight. I mean, yeah. fuck! I've never seen a middleweight so short in all my life. Yeah, he was small. What did you make it, of that it fight? Looked, it, it just looked so. It looked so, like two different weight classes, didn't it? Or two different size classes, shall I say? Um, yeah, it was just was them standing there together. I was thinking this is going to be easy. And then the first round happened. I thought, wow, this guy is actually... Now I know why they said people avoid him. Um, he was just awkward, hard punching. And Tommy Langford just don't hit hard, does he? And I think when you're up against someone that hits hard, you've got to hit them hard back. Otherwise, you know, you get knocked out in the fifth round, didn't you? <laughs> you, you, you had no respect. It looked, it looked like he didn't respect his power. It's true. He could just... I, I flicked through the... When I got back, I flicked through that one. And... I just thought well, he doesn't. He doesn't look like he respects him at all. He's just walking forward. No. Not... Well, his hands down as well. You know, <laughs> letting him hit him and coming through and hitting him with a big left. You know. Do you know what was yeah, weird? Was good... What was that title? It was the interim WBO middleweight title, right? Yeah. The title that Billy Joe Saunders holds. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, why are we making an interim belt? I, can someone explain? Um. Oh, did you see the little skirmish afterwards? Yeah. Which is also Fucking weird hell. because Billy Joe. Oh, that was a oh, mate, Billy Joe. I, I like Billy Joe, but he's he's just got to get in, he's got to get a fight under his belt since that shit show in December, isn't it, or November, whenever it was. Billy Joe's a fucking great, great boxer, man. He's such a talented boxer. But even just watching that, even just watching that video last night, I'm looking at the video and I'm going, "You need to get in the gym. You need to hit the fucking gym. What's going on right now? Because he doesn't work." They're talking about fighting Golovkin in the summer months. That's only a couple of months away, man. Like, you can't keep doing that to yourself. You can't keep ballooning up and then cutting it, ballooning up and cutting it. You're, you're just, it's not good for your body, and, and it's obviously going to have a, an adverse effect on how you fight. Especially when you fight a dumb like Golovkin, you know. Yeah. It, it, you know, he's going to have the same problem that um, Hatton had with Mayweather and uh, Pacquiao, and as soon as you step up against someone good and you don't give the right lifestyle, that's it. You get found wanting, don't you? Exactly. And actually, on, on that, um, it was good to see Kurt Sidzi, or, or however you pronounce it. His, I didn't know his trainer was Andre Rosier, the Danny Jacobs trainer as well. Big, big fan of that guy. I think he's, his corner work is, is exceptional. The way he gives his fighters instructions, calms them down, gets them focused again. But you see a lot of guys kind of freak out in the corner and shout and scream and spark the fighters and all that sort of stuff. Um, I've seen him a couple of times now and I really like the way he operates in the corner. Yeah. What about the, um, let's move over to the match room, the two. What did you think of Ryder and Fielding? That's the only one that I've watched the whole way through because I'm a big John Ryder fan. He's a nice bloke. Um, I've seen some mixed scorecards, man, like really, really mixed. If you if you watch that fight and listen to Tony Bellew, then it was an, a foregone conclusion. Rocky Fielding won by three or four rounds. Um, obviously, the judges gave a split. Today, I've seen so many different opinions by people that know boxing. One person's convinced it was a robbery because fucking Ryder won by four rounds. I don't know. It, it was very, very subjective. What were we saying, Craig? Was, what, what was your thoughts on it? I watched it and it was... Um, the thing is, even if you scored it either way, I, I thought Fielding won it. I thought Fielding won it by a couple of rounds. But even if you're, you're trying to sit there and score it now, if you sat and watched the fight, it's such an awkward matchup style-wise. It was very, very hard to sit there and watch and go, yep, that's his round, yep, that's that round. It was basically just Rocky Fielding trying to do work at long range John Ryder muscling his way inside, trying to do work on the inside, and neither of them really being too successful at, at what they were trying to do. So it was hard for me to sit and watch it and go, yep, he won or he won. And the rounds were very tough to score because they followed that similar pattern the whole way through. I don't know if Kev, Kev gave it you know, definitively one way or the other, but for me it was just, it was just a Again, boring fight to try and score. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I'm not the biggest John Ryder fan, as you know, Sam. 
Um, Leave him alone. But I felt Leave sorry. Him alone. I felt sorry for him yesterday. I did. Um, I had him about one, two rounds. I just liked his aggression on coming in. But as Craig said, there was nothing. It was just watching twelve rounds of yeah, just people. It felt like they were amateurs, if I'm honest. But um, right, I've never rated Rocky Fielding either, to be honest. But I felt sorry for John Ryder. I had him, I think, two rounds up. So. I think the size, the size of John Ryder, just it, it looked to you know massive, massive. It, Rocky Fielding's huge at super middleweight, and Ryder's really small for for super yeah. middleweight. So it just looked. Like yeah, well, they were saying they, they were saying that Rocky Fielding we well, started out at light heavy, yeah. and John Ryder started out at middleweight. Obviously, as we know, so you, you can try and, and bring yourself up to super middleweight, but it's not. We've seen it with Martin Murray as well. You know, we've obviously touched on his fight with Rosado, but we've seen him try and come up to super middle, and it just it didn't it didn't work. So I think if you're going up against a guy who's a natural super middle, fair enough, you may be able to close the distance a little bit. If you're going up a guy against a guy, sorry, who who was naturally a light heavyweight, it's, it's just it's just too much. It's just too much, and it looked it looked a bit of a strange matchup, just physically on on attributes alone. It was an unusual one. We obviously. <laughs> Go on, Kev. Sorry, mate. Uh, I think John Ryder looks better at this weight, though. Yeah. You know, so you've seen him a couple of times now, and he has, and he's come up short. But I think he's boxed so much better than when he was when he was boxing at a lower weight. I really do. We looked, he looked great against Etchies, Sam. We were there, yeah. mate. Remember? That's what I mean. Couple, you know, he, he, the last couple of fights he's looked he's looked decent. You know, mm-hmm. losing losing on the split decision to Rocky Fielding ain't, ain't ain't too bad. Do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, I think he looks so much better at this weight. I really do. Where does he go though from here, Ryder? Because that's that's the third time he's fought for the British title, um, and he's lost every one. Where, where does he go, Sam? For you, I know you, I know you're a fan. I know you spoke to him before a couple of times, but for me, he's, he's a nearly man. He's a nearly man of the the British title. You know, he just keeps coming up short. Yeah, it's. Oh, I don't know. It's heartbreaking, isn't it? It's horrible because he's he's a guy that he is a solid solid guy that you know what I mean you you know when you watch him you're going to watch someone who's going to give it all you know what I mean there's no you don't take time off he's a hard worker he goes into fight and unfortunately he's lost his British title fights against guys that I think his um at middleweight was it Billy Joe and Blackwell or is that have I got that wrong I think it was Billy Joe and, and um yeah. Nick Blackwell beating for the title so you know not no shame in it um, Rocky Fielding I don't believe is a better boxer than him I just think it was awkward and stylistically was horrible for him um, what does Rocky Fielding do for him for me he's reached his pinnacle Rocky Fielding for me I'm not a fan I don't think I he, don't like Rocky yeah I'm not a fan either I don't, I'm not convinced he goes any further so he may hold on to the British and you know what I mean try and defend it outright in which case Ryder may get another shot at him I don't know but I still think he's British title level. I don't think he's below that. I know it, su- it would suggest he is losing out on it three times, but it's not like he's been far and away, blown away, knocked out, lost every round against these guys. Like a split, like Kev said, it ain't there ain't no shame in it, but it just didn't work for him. Like the styles just made it horrible for him. He can come it's again. It's hard to keep coming though. It's hard to keep coming back and come back and come back again. Three times already is enough. How how many times can you keep going to the well and? Uh, and how much does that play on you mentally when you come back for the fourth time or the mm. fifth time? How right. much does that impact the way you perform and the way you prepare for the fight? Yeah, it's a, it's a good point. Who knows? Who knows what he'll do? I don't know. I, he's, he's part of a camp there with, with some great guys. You know what I mean? He's, he's still he's with Craig Richards and O'Hara and Peter Sims and Tony Sims. So he's still yeah. very much part of a very good camp and... I don't think he'll fall off dramatically or drastically. I still think he's the same kind of level, and he, he make he he's a tough fighter to come up against. If you you know you're coming up against him, you're gonna have a tough night. So I think he should stay about and knock about and try again. I really do. The unfortunate, I yeah, I was gonna say the unfortunate thing for him is he moved up from he, he basically he's moved up from a division where we middleweight we we had obviously Billy Joe and only win the world title. Um, we know what happened to Blackwell. God bless now Blackwell. We, you know, Eubank moved up. He, he'd maybe have had a better chance staying at middleweight trying to win a British title. He's moved into the super middleweight, arguably our, our best division as, as a country. It's, you know, the UK has it's got the most the most buzz in the super middleweight division. So it's kind of made it harder on himself. Guys like Callum Smith, even Rocky Fielding, who is 
decent, but he's, he's big for the weight. He's, he's moved into a tougher weight to win the British title. Maybe. Derry, Derry Matthews obviously was just done before you guys, and we were talking about divisions and stuff, and he said he reckons the super middleweight in the, at the moment isn't a great division. Simply, like, obviously, you look at Groves, DeGale, and Callum Smith the three best they're not British level anymore they're above and beyond it so who is knocking about at British level at super middleweight that you would fear no one Craig Richards he's young he's, he's southern area and he's, he's 8-0 Daryl Williams in a year da- yeah Daryl's English champ now obviously won his title last night and it was only his 15th fight he was a, I suppose technically still a and you know he was unknown, wasn't he, before he won that fight? Ah, oh, we can't. But how how long do we keep only his fifteenth fight doesn't work for me personally? Like, yeah, no, only, no, no, no. You know, only his fifteenth. Yeah. From what I saw, John Ryder beats Daryl Williams. I'll, I'll put that out there. John Ryder would beat him hundred mm, yeah, percent. I'd put maybe. my mortgage on it. <laughs> Who's your mortgage with, Kev? Because I work for a bank. <laughs> 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 I think he beats him. I think Rocky Fielding was just a, it, just size difference. Was, yeah, I, th- I think I think John Ryder would beat him. I don't think uh, Daryl Williams is, is particularly massive. I think he's stocky, but uh, I think he'd be perfect for Ryder. Yeah, I think it's a fair show. It's a fair show. be a decent fight. Um, let's go to the main event. Martin Murray and... Rosado, Rez- not Rosondo, as uh, a few people keep calling him. Gabe Rosado. Um, first of all, what the fuck is happening to judging in this country? Stunned. How? Absolutely stunned. How is it um, physically possible for two judges? And now, we've had it, you can argue to your blue in the face about different camera angles and different angles of the, gym, uh, of the ring, and blah, blah, blah. Nine rounds different between two judges sitting there. Like, what the fuck? No, mate. One of them scored at a draw, and one of them scored at eleven one. Eleven, sorry, eleven rounds. That's yeah. It. How how the fu- how is that? I tweeted it last night. How is it physically possible for somebody to score it even six apiece, and for somebody to score it eleven one? They sit on the same fucking table. Yeah. Listen, Rosado's reaction. Um, I'm not being funny. If I'd, if I'd have just bucked for 36 minutes, I probably would have chinned Eddie Hearn. Um, <laughs> you know, I'd have jumped out the ring and chinned him. I'd have done a better you, mate, without a doubt, I think, because I'd have been fuming. Um, yeah, it was just unbelievably ridiculous, wasn't it? I think that's the key, for, key word, ridiculous. Um, that was pretty yeah. close, mate. Yeah, I had, it, I had it draw. <laughs> so, and then to hear that, I thought, Jesus, this is unbelievable. Um, I had it draw myself, so... It's got to be the same. I've guy done enough. It's got to be the same judge that gave Ricky Burns four rounds against Ndongo, isn't it? <laughs> it probably is. What's happening? Yeah, fucking. Who, who knows? I think um, Martin Murray. Martin Murray made a hard work last last night. I think Rosado looked looked quite decent. He looks better than his record suggests, but he, um, he just never really seems to do enough. The one thing that that pissed me off last night was uh, how annoying Oliver Harrison is. He's so fucking annoying, man. Like, he's, he just keeps pitching it. Like, Martin Murray's doing a little post-fight interview and he keeps pitching him a little <laughs> just talking shit. Yeah. Someone's like, someone goes like this, did you really think it was 119, 109? Oliver Harrison just pops up and goes, yep, absolutely. Like, Fuck off, <laughs> Oliver Harrison. No one asked you, son. <laughs> what are you talking about? Get that fucking, get, oh, get out, get out. Um, I thought Rosado was right to react to, well he wasn't right to try and put hands on Martin Murray but I thought he was right to why do we not see that more often I like seeing that I like seeing people passionate and fucking getting annoyed about stuff like that yeah I agree yeah 100% I'd be fuming be absolutely fuming he's so pissed man especially when you've got a record like his which is 23 and 11 now you're 24 and 11 which is a shit record and boxing's at like it doesn't tell the whole story, but in boxing terms, that's that's a shit record. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I saw it last night at the Goodwin show. There was one um, one journeyman, he's there to lose, um, and it was either the second or the third round, he was bashing the geezer up, the prospect, like bashing him up. He ended up losing the fight 40-36, and he flipped out. <laughs> he stood on the edge of the apron and was shouting abuse at the um, 
all the British boxing border control. You don't score me one round, one round. And he's screaming and shouting. And they're just looking up at him, and then they, then they won't make eye contact. They're just looking at each other. And they, yeah, but that's what you need. Yeah. You, need, you need people like that to fucking bring a bit of honesty to the sport, man. Mate. Why do we sit there and we? Why do we sit there and clap and we nod along and we tweet about the results and that and nobody cares about it? Like, just people need to start making it obvious that the, this is bullshit. It shouldn't be happening. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It really is. Uh, anyway, I thought um, Murray Rosado was a fight that everyone billed as being an absolute war. It's going to be a war. There will be blood. It was pretty fucking boring. The best thing about it was Rosado's shots, to be honest. <laughs> the old gladiatorial looking fucking things. <laughs> let's let's talk about Martin Murray. What, is, what does he do? I mean, I like him. I like him, but he's not great. I'm sorry, he's not. He's done. He's done. He's done. Who does he yeah, f- I agree. Yeah, he's got that. Uh, listen, he's a nice lad, isn't he? That's that's what it comes down to. He's a nice lad, but I think yeah, he, he's going nowhere, is he? Do you know what I mean? He's got, he, he hasn't been for a long time. I think he's just collecting a few paychecks. Bless him. I don't blame him. Who's, who's he going to beat in that division? Who's, he's not going to be never going to beat Golovkin. He's never. He's probably never going to beat Billy Joe. He's not going to beat Danny Jacobs. He's not. I, I get. What the, the sad thing is for Martin Murray. He was done in Argentina. He was absolutely done in Argentina. Yeah, he was He's arguably, arguably done in Germany as well. So it, it's, it's sad, but I think the time has passed now. You know what I mean? I think trying to claw that back and trying to get that world that it's not going to happen anymore. It's done. Have you ever seen a guy fall short at middleweight or, or any weight, then go up a weight and have one meaningful fight? I think he knocked over a couple of like binmen and stuff. And he fought George Groves up at Super Middle and got outclassed. And he's gone, fuck it up. He fought Abraham. Did he fight at Super Middle? He fought Abraham Super Middle for the world title and lost on a split. So who did he get beat by at Middle? He got Golovkin. Golovkin, Martinez. Yeah, I mean, it was one Sturm. more. Sturm, that was it. Sturm, the, Sturm, the robber of men. Macklin, he robbed him. <laughs> Fucking he robbed man. everyone, didn't he? <laughs> he's a yeah. proper criminal. <laughs> But again, Abraham and Groves at super middle got beat, went back down. Going back down, where are you going to have any more joy? You touched on it, you know. Golovkin's got them all and the other one is Billy Joe Saunders. I wouldn't even fancy him to go 12 rounds with Billy Joe and he's the the least of the champion's worries. I, I don't know. I don't know what he's still fighting for. He's, he's not even... The thing is, the avenue that he's taken is a WBA. That's, that's the route that he's taken, obviously. He's fighting for that in the continental belt or the international belt, whatever it's called. And... Um, and that's the route that he's going down. You're, you're not beating Danny Jacobs and you're not beating Golovkin. I, I just don't see it. And he has a fucking, he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy and he's, he's honest and he's fair. And I, I don't mind listening to him talk, you know, and I, I know he's been good for British boxing and he's been robbed. He's just, for me, he's not winning a world title. I, I think that's the problem. I think because he's such a nice guy, I think, you know, the promoters ain't got enough balls to say, I think it's time. <laughs> I just think they keep saying, yeah, come on, come on, mate. Just come on another show, you're all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just I feel like that with him. I, I, I want him. I wanted him to do something, you know, be a world champion or get to a certain level. But this has never happened. Every time he's trying, isn't it? So the nearly man. Look yeah. out! Look, look out for the end of 2017. A vacant super middleweight world title. Paul Smith against Martin Murray. <laughs> oh my God, man! <laughs> <laughs> It'd probably be a draw. They're both so unlucky, isn't they? <laughs> Did any, hey, 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 let's, let's be serious for one minute here. Did anybody think Paul Smith had a rough time against uh, Abraham the first fight? I thought Paul Smith won the fight. No, I didn't. I thought he got beat. I didn't. I yeah, thought I thought he got beat. I, I thought it was close, don't get me wrong. But yeah, I thought he got beat. It's just, yeah. I remember that I got, it, the rematch got reordered because the judges was too close. And then he went out the second time and just got battered again. I, not again, but... I know what you mean. A lot of these guys, the first time is their best chance. You saw it with George Groves against Carl Frotch. Because yeah, yeah. it's kind of the unknown element and they box out their skin and they don't quite be, they're not quite at their best and then it goes the second time. But Paul Smith is was lucky to ever get a world title fight. I stand by that. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> I've no argument yet, you're right. <laughs> let's um let's start thinking about bringing it to the final you know, next Saturday's 
colossal event, 90,000 people. Wembley, Wembley Stadium. Sorry, are we not talking about Porter? Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> I don't care about America now or what? <laughs> <laughs> shit. Sum it up, Kev. I didn't see it. Sum it up in one minute. Oh, well, listen, there was, there was a fight before that. Jamel Charlo, mate, for me. Wow. Um, I, I think he is phenomenal. The, the guy, yeah, for me, I, I'm speechless, if I'm honest, every time I watch him. Um, I think both of them are brilliant. Him and his twin brother, or his brother, but yeah, it, it, I think just amazing. Um, yeah, he absolutely schooled the guy, um, and the right hand that he landed to, uh, to finish it, mate, the guy was on the was asleep for about five minutes. Honestly, it was that it was that much of a big shot. Did you see it, Craig? I did. I seen it, mate. It was it was kind of weird. It was a weird situation that Hartley kept the the number one status because he hadn't boxed. He hadn't boxed for like seventeen months or something. Is that right? But he kept yeah. somehow he kept his number one mandatory spot for seventeen months. That's America for you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that was uh, I, I like I like the Charlos. Is it the Charlo? I get confused between them. Um, the Charlo that fought last night. Is he the boy that that beat the guy with a big uppercut? Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. That's helpful. <laughs> the one that fought. Did he beat someone who can uppercut? Yeah. I think Jamel was the better boxer than Jamal, even though they're very similar. But yeah, to be fair, they've not made it. They've not made it easier for us, have they? No, not at all. The same name. That's and brilliant. they look exactly the same. One letter so, difference in their name. I, I worked. Yeah. I worked with a, a guy that had twins called Eric and Derek. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that was a good fight. The Porter Battle fight. Um, was all right. It was kind of what you'd expect. Started off being a bit of a war, and then and then Paul just kind of put it on him every round, just coming forward. He's got some of that, I think. Sean Paul. Berto looks like an old man, though, doesn't he now? Yeah, he's beat up. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't even. He didn't even really. You know, he just looked at his corner, looked at the ref, and was like, "Help!" But you know, it was just. It was pretty bad the ending. But I thought it was a decent fight, competitive. I thought Paul looked much better. Much yeah. better. I thought the. It's a shame. When I see that guy Jim Gray who does the post fights, it's a shame that he's such an arsehole, and it that really ruins it for me because he always comes yeah. in and asks like really irrelevant fucking stuff. He comes in and instead of talking about how to fight, well, he just immediately starts having a go at Porter for accidental headbutts. Then he brings in Keith Thurman because he's Porter's now the mandatory. And instead of talking about the mandatory, try to build it up, he just randomly starts asking Keith Thurman who he thinks is going to win Brooke Spence. Like it's not. It's not fucking relevant, man. Why? Why are you doing it? They just always try. And, they never really seem to give people any praise on those networks over there. It's always just trying to nitpick and and pick holes in people's performances. I don't really like it. Yeah, Larry Merchant. Yeah. Larry Merchant did that for years. People liked him, and he. I thought he was a prick, but. You know, yeah. It's obviously what they like over, over there, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mayweather never liked Larry Merchant, did he? Well, if Larry Merchant was fifty, <laughs> if he was fifty years <laughs> younger, he'd have kicked his ass, apparently. <laughs> Mayweather. Let's um, let's let's get to Joshua now. Is that you happy, Kev? We we summed up America. Yeah, let's crack on. Let's go for it. All right. An amazing card. He's, he's put on a wonderful undercard for Wembley, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> no. no, no, all right, no. Let's just, no, not at all. <laughs> let's just talk about the main event. <laughs> yeah, let's just skip to it. Have you watched the gloves are off? You two? No. <laughs> no. What's the fucking point? It was that boring, honestly. Well, there's no point. All I seen was, I respect you. If I beat you, I will help you come back. If you beat me, I will shake your hand. Like, all right, no worries, man. I don't need to sit and watch it. It's boring. Is it boring? Way, way too much respect there, isn't it? That's the thing. But is that a bad thing, man? Like, Derry Matthews just said, when he went into O'Hara Davis' change room after the fight, he said to him, you're a good fighter, but let your fight and do the talking. You don't need to do this. You don't need to talk as much. I mean, each to their own, right? But why? Is it a bad thing if two guys genuinely respect each other and don't want to call each other pricks and throw tables at each other's and that? Is it a bad thing? It's not a bad thing. I think, I'll, I'll, obviously, I'm, I'm going to the fight, so I'll be interested in the fight. I'll be interested in how it plays out. Have you told I your missus yet I'm having her ticket? <laughs> she doesn't know yet. But what I'm planning on doing is killing her during the week. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think... <laughs> I think... I'll take that. If she... Listen, man, if she dies during the week, I'm fucked. We need to take this off YouTube. Um, <laughs> I think... I, I'll be interested in the fight. It'll be cool. But I'm just not going to watch any of the build-up. I, I don't have to watch the build-up. So that's that's the one thing you take away from it. And I think you, 
take away from anybody that's on the fence, anybody that doesn't know whether they're going to pay 20 quid for the pay-per-view, whether they're going to try and scramble and get a ticket, you maybe just won't bother because there's less, there's less angsty build-ups, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, I, you know what, I've, I was, I've always been so excited with heavyweight boxing and especially British heavyweights, um, you know, world world champions, but this fight, I'm just like, I don't even know if I'll buy it, honestly. You will. Um, You've bought some I, shit I, I over will, years. I'm not even going to lie, I will, but just to say I watched it, but Jesus, it is absolutely boring. It's, um, I hope it's an amazing fight, but I'm not too sure it will be, um, but yeah, hope, hope it lives, you know, it lives up to what it is. Who do you think wins, Sam? Do you know, I've gone, I've gone back and forth, weirdly, like, it wouldn't surprise me if AJ smashes him out there in three or four rounds, right? Um, because in a way, it's another one of them weird situations where people that don't like Anthony Joshua are going to say, you beat a 41-year-old who ain't fought in 18 months and last time he did, he got schooled by Tyson Fury. So Joshua is going to be, if he knocks him straight out, his haters are still going to be piping up. So I, it's a weird one where on paper, it's a great fight for him, but win or lose I'm not convinced that people anyone's going to turn their opinion around and think you know what he, he's a well deserved he's the real deal he's the hype I don't know I, it wouldn't surprise me if he gets the win early or if Klitschko can take him down the, and, and go a bit you know old, a bit old school what we saw of him three four years ago where he made the fights dull and he just jabbed and moved and held and clinched and jabbed again yeah uh, you know I can't I'm holding and clinching though Honestly, I just think Joshua's going to be too strong. I just think Joshua will push him off, throw him off. Um, if he tries to tries that sort of tactic, I really do. I just can't see him being able to hold him down and clinch him. And I just think if he goes down that tactic, I think that's it. That's an early night. I really do. I think he's literally got a jab and move, which I don't think we've ever seen him do. So I don't, I don't give him much hope, if I'm honest. I think if he can take it, if he can take it into the later rounds, then maybe. But... I don't know. I just don't I see think, any other way. I think Klitschko beats him. Yeah. Really? I think Klitschko beats him, man. How? Um, well, I've been trying to weigh it up, right? And I've been on and off the Anthony Joshua hype train. Um, and I do like Anthony Joshua. I think he's, he's obviously a massive puncher. Looks nice and athletic and all that sort of stuff. But the only thing that, the only thing that sticks in my mind is, again, kind of what I said with Anthony Yard, before the Olympics in 2012, he'd only started boxing about 18 months before that. He doesn't have that that boxing in his blood from a young age. He doesn't have that knowledge of the, the game. He doesn't have the ringmanship that that guy like Klitschko will have. Now, if Klitschko stands there with his hands up in front of him, he's going to he's going to get punched through the ropes, Bernard Hopkins style. But I think if Klitschko uses his old smarts, makes it an ugly, ugly fight, a boring fight. I reckon if he if he drags it past the halfway mark, it's um I think it's a tricky fight for Joshua. Listen, Klitschko knows what to do to drag out a win. I think Joshua doesn't know that. He just knows how to put people on the floor. Doesn't I know. Do, I do want Josh. I do want Klitschko to land one on him just to see yeah. if he can. Because let's yeah. have it right. No, we don't know, do we? Well, Dillian and landed. Klitschko, Dillian landed, didn't he? Yeah, yeah but then, then he took him up. This, took then he popped his shoulder out and couldn't carry on. You know, but uh, and Dillian ain't the biggest. Six days away. One word. Give us a prediction, Kevin. You're going, Joshua. I'm going Joshua. Yeah, I'm going Joshua. Um, I think Joshua. 
I'm going Joshua early. I don't want to. I don't want to. But I'm going to go Joshua first three. Craig, you're saying you think points Klitschko, or you think he can he can wear Josh down and get a get a stoppage? Um, I think Klitschko will stop him in the second half of the fight. I cannot be more specific, but I should remind you that I picked Santa Cruz in the rematch and I picked Bellew against him, so my record does not need to be questioned. It's <laughs> <laughs> very true. This should I'm here now. <laughs> we, we don't know if you're staying here, mate. Don't get too carried away. <laughs> This has been the Fight Talk podcast. Give us your um, give us your feedback on Kevin. Is he is he as much of a cunt as I say, or is he not too bad? Um, let us know what you think about him. It's been the Fight Talk podcast.